truth be told Since I was eight or nine years old Sailed away Hey, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop Tuesday in Perth Normally beautifully sunny and that outside at the moment uh, It looks like the British Channel um, It has a... Uh, a fairly thick coverage of fog on it, but otherwise all good. Uh, just sending my um, hellos to Deb's, uh, John uh, Mill's wife, uh, coming out of hospital today, I hope, and uh, hope everything's good, uh, Deb's, and you don't find the kitchen in too much of a mess. Um, um, anyway, what I want to do today uh, is to show all sorts of uh, different types of, um, of measuring devices for measuring internal bores or holes etc um, there are many and varied and this is not the this is not the limiting factor of it all <clears throat> most of the ones I have that are vernier style are, uh, are metric I do have also imperial um, but, but as I, everybody knows I mainly work in metric secondly um, the ones that don't uh, that are not imperial or metric are actually spring type and they uh, you can be measure them with a micrometer or or a uh, a vernier, um, vernier to whichever type of measurement you want to do uh, these are not the ultra end of the line sort of things these are most of these are just standard types that we uh, we have in workshops and there's some couple of specials here as well so I'll start working my way through them. I'll just uh, swing around here and, uh, and, and show you some of the, first of all, the, a collection. Two of these belong to somebody else uh, and they'll be returned after this uh, video. I've um, I used one of them with great success. So here we go, we'll swing around and there's, a, as you see, there's an array of tools, more of them down here, um, and so forth. So we'll we'll uh, just come back up a bit here, lock up, and we'll start showing you things. First of all, the old the old style spring caliper. These ones I've modified, as you can see, with the legs. I've heated them up and bent the legs out for measuring internal uh, circlip. Um, or, or internal grooves and then from there I'll just pick it up with a micrometer or, or a vernier. Um, the, the standard type, this is a uh, this is a more, more and right, most of these ones that I have are more and right. It's a standard type, a larger one. I have a very big one behind me here that I use very rarely. Uh, then you also have the digital style, um, the digi digital style internal groove. So they, and of course this will work with um, imperial or or, uh, um, or metric, whichever you want, and you can also put it uh, put it out to a. Um, uh, to a computer. The other groove uh, or hole mic is this one here. Um, that's this is a, a, a metric one, and as you will see, as you wind the normal way that you would wind a micrometer in, this actually moves it out, <coughs> and it and it works in reverse sort of thing. Um, this this one here is uh, for uh, very very tight little holes and and so forth. Same sort of principle. Um, it's a metric micrometer. Uh, metric uh, micrometer. And then you go from there to this little fellow, which is a um, I think it's it's a Mitsutoyo. I've had this for many many years. This goes up to 50 millimeter, and uh, that's 25. And then to do 50 millimeters, you remove the anvil, and you can add into that. Well, here I have 
a longer anvil and also a slip piece. So that could be so you can so that gives you the range from 25 to 50 millimeters in that in that principle. Then I have my larger one, which my brother gifted to me in 1967. This is a more and right set, uh, and that goes up to um, to 310, I think it is 310 millimeters. By changing once again, by just changing the anvil out, and uh, we've got all the different sizes there of those anvils, and you can measure that with my micrometer measurement. That's an excellent tool. Um, then from there uh, we've got what we call the, the tube micrometer. This one's also a metric one. It's a tube micrometer and you can change you can change the different tube lengths to larger, smaller, um, the smaller ones. They've got an anvil inside and that anvil gets pressed on here, so when you screw this in, it makes that protrude out, and then you use your your mic for measuring. So that's a that's a tube mic, um, and that one goes up to uh, about five hundred millimeters. In, in length when you add all the tubes together. Um, another, uh, another type of measuring device is the spring calipers. Everybody knows about them. Some people use them, some don't. I, for me, they are the go-to go -to tool for when I'm, I'm machining and in the, in, in the, uh, doing bores because I can measure the part that's going to go into the bore with a micrometer. I can use the same micrometer for measuring the, how much I'm machining. And so <coughs> you're only using one item, one item to grab the, di the, the diameter, the, and, but one micrometer to the So you have, you're not working with two separate micrometers, one internal, one external. And there are cases when you need to. These normally go up to 150 millimetres. From in this particular case, these um, Mitatoya ones is from eight millimeter up to 150 millimeter. Um, I haven't seen larger ones, but I've seen ones with a longer arm on them, so you can get deeper in. I don't own those. Then, and then here I've got another more and right tool, and this one uh, also internal. And this goes from 8 inch to 23 inch. And once again, you've got different anvils, different anvils that you can put on here. And uh, this, this measures a thousandth of an inch. In, continuing on with the spring type, we have these ones as well. And they're for bore gauges and they spread out. And they spread out and then you can measure those with a micrometer. Um, this set goes from uh, 0.25 or 3 millimetres up to 10 millimetres. And then the second, the second set that I have, uh, that these are, these are micrometer set, um, this set here, they work with balls. And uh, there are two balls here that get spread as you, as you operate the, uh, the micrometer. And um, and they they are they are very accurate, and very good uh, tools. This one goes up to half inch, of, if I if I recall rightly, uh, twelve point seven millimeters. Uh, so you can use it for both as well, um, because you could just pick up then the diameter with a, with an outside outside micrometer if you want. Um, we then go on to. Uh, bore dial indicators and these are uh, these indicators work with a, a spring loaded arrangement 
so they can go down the bore, they roll down the bore with no friction, and then then the um, the anvil gets pushed in, and when the anvil gets pushed in, it operates the dial gauge, and these can be these anvils can be changed from from uh, large to small. This particular unit goes up to 150 millimeter. That's the longest anvil, and uh, and this one here is the shortest anvil. From there we've got uh, a larger bore, this one here, same principle, does the same thing, um, when, when you press, press that, uh, the button in, you've got a bit of movement here on the, on the wheels to take up any friction, the wheels roll down and then you drop it down into the hole move it over and measure with the gauge. Um, this particular one I had I had a very big job to do that I didn't have any micrometers here, internal micrometers or or means of testing and checking uh, some large bores. So what I did was uh, this particular unit had several different anvils. Uh, and I and it and these anvils just screw in with a simple uh, eight millimetre eight eight millimetre by one millimetre pitch thread. So what I did to accommodate that was I just took a piece of stainless steel, twelve millimetre stainless steel, and bored it and fitted an anvil to it, the anvil that I needed for the size, I bored the other side so I tapped tapped here, put a, a thread in and then I mounted that. I screwed that then in, locked that in place and that allowed me to get the diameters I needed. Um, so not everything has to work out of the box, you can improvise and uh, and you can you can get your dimension there. The last one I'm going to show you is is this this gauge here. This is a Starrett um, a Starrett unit, and it's got a number to it somewhere. Uh, this is a number six six nine six, um, and it has a a point, a really sharp point here, and it also has a weight. So this weight can be shifted from side to side when it, for, for convenience and what you do is you, you put the different anvils, different length anvils and there's, there's a few, quite a few of them here, you, you put that Okay, we screw that in and then the other side this anvil can be pulled out and there's all different styles of those and then that gets locked up and then this is this is then used for seeing the deflection of a crankshaft that's why it's pointy here and it's specially made and so when they move it around you can you can change that and you can balance uh, you can balance it out so you can read uh, easily read the, um, uh, the thing, so it's very, very tight. But there you go, it's working. And that, but it's uh, pointing one. So that is a crankshaft uh, straightness tester. So there you have it. They're all the, um, they're all those uh, individual tools. Not all that you get, there's many others, <clears throat> but these are the ones that I have in my shop together with a couple that belong to us, somebody else, and uh, <clears throat> just use what you're comfortable with.
flood my vision for a hundred miles. I 